Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Davis. I'm the developer of DataForge Notebook and author of the book Data Wrangling with JavaScript. In this video, I'm doing a study of AMI, a company on the Australian Stock Exchange. I recently bought AMI and I lost it. It hit my stop loss of 20%. And now I'm going back to look at it because I wanna know, should I really have bought AMI? Should it really have been part of my stock trading strategy? Ideally, I want a rule that possibly could have eliminated me buying AMI in the first place. It may not be possible to find such a rule, uh, but I want to do a little bit of a look at the history of AMI, a little bit of a study. Um, particularly, I'm looking for um, big drawdowns. I'm looking for uh, big negative changes, uh, the like of which could allow me to make a rule that eliminates uh, such companies from future trading. Now, after I find such a rule, I have to backtest it, of course. I have to understand how it affects my strategy on a global level. But first, I need to study the data and, and figure out what the rule is going to be. I'm starting with a blank notebook in DataForge Notebook. First thing I'm going to do is load in some of the NPM libraries that I need. I need DataForge for loading the data and for processing it. I need DataForge FS for loading files. I need DataForge indicators for some of the financial indicators I, I use from that. I need DataForge plot so I can make some charts from my data. Now I'm going to load a CSV file that I prepared earlier. This data originally comes from eodhistoricaldata.com. I pay a small price per month to, to buy this data. It's pretty cheap. It's not the best data service in terms of the quality of the data, but it's a good price, so it, it balances out. Now I've downloaded the data, prepared it the way I want to in a CSV file. Now I'm going to load that CSV file, and I'm just going to do a quick preview of the data just to make sure that everything looks okay. Whoops, I've got a bit of an error there. Looks like I added one parenthesis too many. Let's try again. Bingo, we've got some data. Looks like it's loaded correctly. I'm just gonna plot this data. I wanna see what the closing price of AMI is. I've just got a little bit more data prep here that I need to do. Uh, I'm parsing the dates to a proper JavaScript date format so that I can index my data frame by date. Uh, and that will mean later that I can uh, reintegrate computed data. I'm looking at the tail, the last 250 entries in the data frame, only because that's about approximately the last 12 months. I don't want to look at too much data. It's just too much to, to, to deal with. Uh, I'm going to bake this into memory just so that uh, future operations with this data frame are going to be a lot quicker. Again, I'm just going to do a quick preview of my data because that will tell me if I've done something wrong or if uh, everything's sort of working out as I expected. That looks pretty good. What I want to do next is uh, look at the extremes of, of the movements of, of the price of AMI. Specifically, I want to look at the distance from a peak to a trough. Typically, this is called drawdown. So I want to have a look at what the largest drawdowns are in the last 12 months for AMI. I can do this using the extrema function from DataForge indicators. Let's preview that and see what it gives us. So this tells us when the price of AMI is at its extremes. It gives you a one value when it's at a peak and a negative one value when it's at a trough. Now I can reintegrate uh, these extrema values with my data frame. And just to give you an idea of, of what that gives us, I'll, I'll preview the data. So you can see on some days we get uh, peaks and some other days we get troughs. Now that I've integrated the extreme points into my original data frame, I'm going to filter the original data frame so that I've only got those extreme points and, and I've got all the other data associated with that as well. Then I can pull out the closing price just at the extreme points and I can compute the percentage change between the extreme points. And again, we'll preview the data to see what we're getting here. Now this isn't very uh, illuminating, so let's plot this as a chart. So I'm gonna plot the changes. I'm doing it as a bar chart. The, the default is a line chart. Bar chart is appropriate in this case. So now we can see the percentage different from each peak to trough and each trough to peak. 
What we're actually interested in though is just the drawdown. So I'm going to add a filter to my data. So we're only going to pull out changes that are below zero and we're going to plot that. So this gives you a bar chart of the peak to trough drawdowns for AMI over the last 12 months. And it's easy to see the biggest drawdown is 18.9%. So from this, I might say something like, I would like to have a rule in my trading strategy that prevents me from buying any company that has, say, a uh, peak to trough drawdown of 15% or more in the last six to 12 months. Of course, I can't know um, if this rule is gonna be useful. I need to do further back testing, uh, understand how it affects my strategy as a whole. But this is one way of kind of testing ideas, potentially generating ideas for changes to my trading strategy. That's it for this video. If you like the look of DataForge Notebook, please register your interest at dataforgenotebook.com.